So yeah, I guess let's just, we'll get started. If you could tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. Um, so I'm Daisy Freund. I'm the vice president of farm animal welfare for the ASPCA. And I've been with the ASPCA for 10 years. I oversee a really incredible team of, of animal science, agribusiness, farm policy and advocacy specialists. Um, we're all devoted to building a more humane food system. We do that through corporate outreach, policy advocacy, research, grant making, and public education. Uh, before I was with the ASPCA, I worked in public relations and the restaurant industry, and I spent time apprenticing on a farm in the US and in France. Very cool. France sounds like a fun place to get to work. To farm, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I spent some, I've spent a little bit of time in France and like walking on the countryside is just epic. The best. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you already kind of touched on this. Can you go a little bit more into depth into what you do at the ASPCA? Sure. So <clears throat> first of all, the ASPCA is the American Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals. And uh, it was founded in 1866. It was the first animal welfare organization in North America. And today we have about 2 million supporters. We're committed to preventing cruelty, be that to, to dogs or cats or horses or farm animals throughout the United States. Um, and we do that through a mix of on the ground um, disaster and cruelty intervention work, behavioral rehab rehabilitation, animal placement, trainings, research, um, legal advocacy, policy advocacy, and then extensive grant making. So the Farm Animal Welfare Program really builds on all of those pieces. We, um, we're working to change policies that influence how animals are raised, whether that's um, bans on the worst practices or uh, reforming the food label space. We are working with food companies and farmers of all sizes to try to move them toward higher welfare standards. And we do that both through corporate engagement and um, you know, traditional positive um, incentives, but also through grant making and trying to actually help resource farmers and companies so that they can afford to make these more expensive changes. Um, and we're also working on research that proves the value of higher welfare farming and of reduction of animal product consumption, um, and also really provides new evidence of the harms of factory farming. Great, thank you. Um, going off of that, can you tell us about ASPCA's position on antibiotic use in uh, factory farm animals? So, you know, as with humans, animals do sometimes get sick. And at a high level, the ASPCA believes sick animals must receive timely and effective treatment for the illnesses and infections that they have. But that just is not how antibiotics are being used on industrial farms in the US. We know that nearly 10 billion animals are raised and slaughtered every year as part of the food system. And most of them are spending their lives intensively confined on industrial facilities, which we call factory farms, and they're suffering immensely. Um, you know, pigs and chickens and sometimes cattle are living in by the tens of thousands and they're living on top of each other. They're, they have barely enough room to, to move. Um, they're sometimes in cages where they can't turn around or even stretch their limbs. They have no environmental enrichments. They're directly in contact with feces and urine for their entire lives. They're just, you know, physiologically, psychologically, and immunologically compromised and stressed for their entire lives. And one totally predictable outcome of forcing animals to live in, in these unnatural conditions and these filthy conditions is that they're gonna get sick and they aren't gonna thrive. So rather than addressing the root cause and giving animals better lives, better environments, um, industrial animal agriculture turned to drugs, to antibiotics, to keep animals alive and growing in a system that would otherwise sicken and kill them. And today we know the majority of antibiotics used in this country are, are going to animals raised for food. So it's a terrible short-sighted, cruel, very crude fix, uh, which has its own terrifying set of consequences for public health that, that factory farms are, are now churning out superbugs that evade our, our best antibiotics. 
So we've created an animal welfare crisis and a public health crisis really layered onto itself. Um, and the ASPCA opposes this routine use of, of sub or non-therapeutic antibiotics on farms, whether or not they're medically important. Um, farming practices should be used that keep animals healthy and that reduce their stress, like raising breeds that um, have robust immune systems and getting animals outside where they belong or giving them enrichments so that they can perform their natural behaviors. Um, and if they are raised indoors, using appropriate stocking densities and keeping facilities clean and ventilated. And that's really the baseline that all animals deserve. But that's even more important um, when farms do make the switch to raising animals without antimicrobials. So, you know, interestingly, animal groups are not always on board with antibiotic free as a concept. Um, we all want antibiotics out of the food system because we know they're propping up really cruel factory farming. But simply removing antibiotics without changing the environments can mean that animals suffer even more, um, where there's more, more morbidity and mortality. So that's why we also really recommend that, that, that people look for, that companies adopt certain animal welfare programs that ban routine antibiotic use, but also require environments that keep animals healthy. Um, that's a really important uh, part of the solution. Absolutely. Um, would you be able to go into depth about a specific species and what their life is like on a factory farm? Yeah. Um, so at any given moment, there's 1.6 billion chickens, pigs, cows, or other animals being raised for food across the United States. And, um, these numbers are so staggering that it can really, um, it can mask the experience that individual animals have. Um, and, and that means that the consumers and the public can kind of stay distant from um, what really is a, a form of animal abuse playing out um, on an almost unfathomable scale. So you can take mother pigs as a really particularly moving example. Um, pigs are intelligent, they're social, they are really caring animals with very strong maternal instincts. I've seen this personally on farms where I've worked. Um, in the wild, a pregnant pig is willing to walk for miles just to find the perfect spot and all the perfect materials to build a nest for her young. And um, all of that is thwarted by the way that, that mother pigs live on industrial farms. The meat industry repeatedly impregnates female pigs so that it can raise and, and kill newborn piglets. Um, on factory farms, mother pigs never feel sun on their back. They never feel grass under their hooves. Uh, mother pig is going to be confined to a metal cage that's seven feet by two feet, which is barely bigger than her body. So she can barely move a step forward or backward, totally unable to turn her around um, throughout the entire pregnancy. She'll be standing on concrete, just you know, concrete with slats so that the manure falls through. So she's spending her whole life just a few feet above a giant lagoon of, of fetid manure um, that will burn her eyes and her skin. I've personally experienced this going into factory farms and it's, it's truly unbearable to actually just be in those environments because of the amount of ammonia in the air. When she gives birth, she's going to be moved to a farrowing crate, which is really the same um, condition, but there's space for the piglets next to her. So she's equally confined, still unable to turn around, still actually unable to access the piglets to play with them and protect them, um, but she can feed them. And then they're weaned away at just a few weeks old and she's re-impregnated. So, um, you know, this is really a, a nightmare for these animals and for all the animals who are, are equally um, prevented from experiencing um, anything but frustration and stress for most of their lives. Oh, thank you for that. Um, so uh, how can we bring about better living conditions for these animals? So, <clears throat> Is it loud in my background? 
Uh, I heard something, but it's it's okay now. Okay, all right. I need to close the door, so please just stop me if I do. Um, so the ASPCA is um, devoting itself to bringing about better living conditions for farm animals. We're calling for an end to the cruelest factory farming practices like intensive confinement, um, an end to the cruelest practices surrounding- okay, I'm still sorry, I'm still hearing something, yeah. <laughs> This is great, by the way. Oh my goodness, she's so well spoken. Yes. Yeah. All right. That should work. Cool. Thank you. All right. Um, Do you want me to ask the question again? Sure. Okay. So, uh, how can we bring about better living conditions for farm animals? So, the ASPCA is calling for a number of changes to bring about better living conditions for animals. We want an end to the cruelest factory farming practices, intensive confinement of mother pigs, of laying hens, um, crowding and, and just um, terrible conditions on the average factory farm need to end. We're also doing that through um, calling for an end to uh, cruel slaughter practices and depopulation practices, which are increasingly being used to address um, bird flu and other fragilities in the food system. Uh, and we're, we're working as well with companies to adopt these holistic welfare certifications that ban some of the worst practices and require environments where animals um, can thrive. We are also supporting a transition to more humane agriculture through grants through government funding and through consumer education. So, you know, it's essential that we don't just tear down um, and criticize the system as it is, but also build up an alternative system um, and one that uh, consumers can afford, one that um, is both better for animals and better for the pub for public health and for the environment, um, really a food system that uh, reflects our values. And we're advocating as well for more transparency in animal agriculture, because until we know what's happening, until consumers can make informed choices, we really don't have the power to change what's going on. So we're doing that through policies to protect whistleblowing, food labeling reform, and research that exposes the harms of factory farming. Awesome. Um, so what is your suggestion to consumers to help pressure reforms on factory farms? Really, no matter what somebody eats, and this is very important because I think people feel that unless they're um, you know, abstaining from all animal products, maybe they don't have a role. No matter what people eat, they do have a role in ending factory farming and addressing uh, the many problems that it's causing, both animal cruelty and this public health crisis of the misuse of antibiotics. And we know through surveys that no matter what people eat, they just have no appetite for farm animal cruelty. So that's why the ASPCA launched something called Shop With Your Heart, which is a program to inform consumers and connect them with companies that are committed to more humane practices. Specifically, we recommend three certifications, Certified Humane, Global Animal Partnership, and Animal Welfare Approved. And um, we provide lists of all of the companies and farms that have these certifications and where you can find their products. So we try to make it as, as easy as possible. You know, it is really important that people combine um, less and better. Ultimately, we all want animals to be out in, on pasture, um, leading their best possible life. We don't really have the resources to do that for almost 10 billion animals. So in order to, to give animals their best life um, and really um, meet the, the resources of, of, our, of our planet, it's important that we reduce animal product consumption. But I think that gets lost sometimes and people feel that it's an all or nothing proposition. It's just not. If, if everyone in the US did one plant-based day per week and one pasture-based day per week, it would save 2.8 billion animals from factory farming, and that would radically um, dismantle the industrial animal agriculture system. So everybody has a role to play by, by opting for more plant-based foods and by buying higher welfare certified products. You're ultimately supporting more humane farming, and you're signaling to the larger industry that 
you're hungry for change. Awesome. Um, moves us into our last question. What is one thing that you think people can do to actually help battle superbugs? Well, each of the animal welfare certifications that I named um, have a policy against the routine use of, of antibiotics. So if you're going to continue to consume you know, any animal products, it's really important to know your labels um, and look for those labels and certifications that mean that, that antibiotics are not being misused. Um, and then ultimately to try to share this because it's just um, a complicated chain of events that leads from you know, animals being um, cruelly treated on a farm to a human suffering from antibiotic resistance. And the more we can share information on this, the more we can start to make that uh, long chain you know, bring it closer to home and get people taking action on an everyday, three times a week, three times a day uh, scale.